In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Well, what if I told you that I can prove to you in one minute's time that giants do exist? So first of all, you've probably seen a lot of photos like these ones showing, you know, actual giant skeletons. Now, of course, there's a lot of people that get pretty angry about these photos saying, oh, but why do they get so angry about these photos? Well, because they're fake and they are fake. But let's take a look at the real ones. So first of all, let's have a look at these six and a half foot femur bones. Now, these were literally confirmed as real by archaeologists. So this isn't fake. But of course, these were deemed as being dinosaur bones. Now, I can't help but think, and I see a lot of people say the same sort of thing. You see all these giant bones. How come everybody just instantly assumes, oh, it's a dinosaur? Now, of course, that's one thing. It probably is a dinosaur, but you know, it's just an example. Take a look at this mummy, Cap Dua from the 1600s. A two-headed mummy. A two-headed mummy. What? Nah. Yep, the thing was alive back in the 1600s. I mean, it's possible to have two heads. Pretty rare, but you could. Not when you find out that they were over 12 foot tall. Now this is on display in a museum, and again, has been confirmed by archaeologists and physicians and scientists, so this is real again. Now, if this doesn't prove to you giants did exist at one point or another, I don't know what the flip will. This giant skeleton was discovered in Ecuador, and is 100% Guaranteed to be real as well. Do you want to know how tall this one was? 23 feet tall. But they haven't confirmed that it was a giant person. They said it is an ancient giant sloth. Now, of course, there are tons of other examples of this giant footprints found in South Africa. All across the world, these other things which have been found. But yeah, I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Did giants used to exist? Make sure you hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. I personally believe that giants at one point of time did exist. I don't know if it was just the foods that we were eating or what happened necessarily to make us not giants, but giants I do believe existed. In this reference, there was a 12 foot tall, two headed giant. I believe that that was probably the common height of giants back in the day, but why don't we have them now? Why, where are they at? There was this trending game on TikTok that was going around. It's called the Cat Scratch Game. And this is something like you play during a sleepover because you just want to fuck around and see what happens, right? One person has to be sitting cross-legged on the floor. Another person has to be, their head has to be on your lap. So like, just like this, like laying down, right? Yeah, yeah. And you have to tell a story about a cat while you're like rubbing the person's head. So an example would be like, my grandma had a cat. It was beautiful and it purred. And then you have to say, after every sentence, you have to say, cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but my cat got hit by a car and the grandma also did too. Cat scratch, and you keep going, right? Yeah, yeah. When the person stands up, you have to tell them to show their back. Why? And if you did the game right, and everybody that I was reading did the game, there was three cat scratches oh. on... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was <laughs> on their back. Yeah. Yeah. But one person said that when they were trying to take a photo of the cat scratches, uh, their phone on full battery died. Oh, that's crazy. And, and when they recharged it, the photo was gone. No, that's... I always ask these questions. Where do people come up with the idea to play these games? Like, is it just a spur of the moment? Like, oh yeah, let's play a game called Cat Scratch. And you just lay on your back, I'll rub your head and tell you a story. And in between every sentence, just say Cat Scratch three times. Like, who comes up with this? There were castles and big, massive buildings in America before Columbus in 1492 and that whole story before he even got here. So if there were already all these massive castles, massive buildings, and all these people, big people too, in, before 1492, then how did they have the technology while Christopher Columbus is coming over on his cute, you know, Santa Maria or Pinta or whatever it was, those t the three ships that they used. And where are those ships? How come we don't see those ships? How come we don't see those today? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Wouldn't those be like put in a museum? What do you put the three most important ships of America in a museum? We don't see those either. And that's the thing. There's so many parts that are missing in which we don't see, but then we see all this nonsense over here. What about the Egyptian-like artifacts found in the Grand Canyon? Yes, same exact thing. So you have Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon in Arizona. 
When I was in school, I was told that those boats were used to build different buildings and forts and things like that. I don't necessarily believe that. I'm not sure if I believe in the old earth theory either where there was castles and buildings and things like that. I mean, truthfully, there could have been. And when Christopher Columbus came over to America, he could have potentially started a war with these people and completely rewrote history in their favor. What do you guys think about this? I have a hard time believing it went exactly like how history was told. I always think history stories are kind of false to a, to an extent, but who knows? Do y'all ever feel weird when you go in Walmart? It's like a bad vibe or a bad cloud or something dark is at Walmart. Some of the workers have a bad attitude. A lot of people don't really want to be at work there. They looking at their money, but their energy is bad. It's always something going on at Walmart. A fight, the police are being called up there, crazy stuff happening in the parking lot, women gotta be safe in the parking lot walking to their cars. A lot of people been kidnapped at Walmart. You ever notice when you go in Walmart, they used to have pictures of kids that are missing, never been found, ever been found. Now they got all self checkouts, only a few registers open, and then they done changed everything around up in their store. It's like they done downsized everything, it's so confusing. The things you used to find, you can't hardly find it. You got to ask where everything get. You got to relearn the whole story all over again. And the management, man, when I say the management, has a bad, bad attitude. I don't know how much they paying these managers, but the way they be treating them workers, it ain't right. Money is the root of all evil. Because soon that money get in their hand, people change their mind. They change the way they treat people. It's like something gets in their spirit when they see all that money. They see power. They see control. They step on everybody. They want to be on top of everybody. It's like they want to be up high and they step on the one down low. It's like you got to work so hard at Walmart just to get a position. And they only give it to people that they like or they cool with. You go in Walmart, the money going to come out your pocket. Because you buy one thing, you're going to buy 20 things. You think you're going to spend $10, you spend 50 Let me know what y'all think. I can't be the only one. I do know that there's a lot of good employees at Walmart, at least the one in my area, there is really good employees. Now, is there bad employees? Yes. And there's really bad customers. There's a lot of people that act inappropriate at Walmart for some reason. Maybe it's just the area that I live in. I really don't know. How do you guys fare with Walmart? Is Walmart a uncomfortable place for you or is it just a normal store? For me, very unpleasant to be inside of a Walmart. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph here, you'll see that 23% of the viewers that watch my content are actually subscribed to my channel, while 76% of the viewers that watch my content are not subscribed to the channel, but keep coming back for more of the content. So to the 23% that are subscribed, thank you so much. And to the 76 that aren't subscribed, I appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. This is a phrase I coined when examining old photos in 2018 when I began looking at photos myself with respect to mystery history and investigation in the videos that I did on my YouTube channel called UAP after seeing Martin leak his work on his channel. Now these skies that I called vanilla skies, I also called Niller skies. I had noticed first that the painted on flags were atop the buildings in an obviously manipulated, hand animated or painted depiction on a photograph. Now these are photographs that are presented as being historic. And in many cases they're showing the old world as we are discovering on this channel. I began to see such anomalies as these, and furthermore, unnaturally cropped edges, and began to realize it wasn't just overexposures of light, but purposeful film exposures or masking during darkroom development, perhaps, and other types of manipulations. Now, this can be acceptable, and there can be good reasons for this, but when we're talking about supposedly historical depictions, it makes one wonder. Those definitely looked masked for sure. Whoever edited those photos did a incredibly bad job. Maybe for that time they were great, 
but you can tell looking at them, those are photoshopped for sure. And I wonder why. Did they just make the skies brighter? So they thought that, okay, I'll just mask a white background behind the buildings to make the the image more vibrant or more bright. I really would love to know why it was done the way it was. If any of you have any comments on this, let me know because there had to have been a reason why they did that, why they masked those images. Those are clearly photoshopped or doctored images, clearly. Was it to hide airships in the sky, certain flags, certain what? What was it that they were trying to hide or was it to improve the image? I opened the box. And this is in it. And it has some very KKK's cross fucking. This was in my box of Velveeta. So I'll admit when I first saw that video, I took it with a grain of salt. But upon doing some further research, this is something that's happening very frequently. So all across Pennsylvania for the past few months, people have been finding these bizarre cryptic conspiracy laden notes packaged with their food or other home good items. Someone found one of these notes in a Belvita box. The person at the beginning found theirs in a Velveeta box. And they've been found in dog food containers, pasta, cake mix, candy and cookies. Whoever is putting these notes in these boxes has access to a lot of food. Now, obviously, whatever this person is putting on these notes is coded in some way. I haven't really found anybody that's been able to decipher what this note actually means, but it's incredibly offensive and incredibly bizarre, making references to a number of disturbing topics. It really is a mystery. Who has access to this much food? Who's bringing these notes in and who's putting them in boxes? Obviously, whatever this person has tried to do by spreading this message has worked because their message is now blasted all over social media, whatever that message is. But I really hope that they can find who's doing this and question them because, I don't know, it's kind of concerning that this person's able to put this sort of a thing in food. Who knows what else this person could add into food products, especially if they have this sort of access already. It makes me wonder if there's someone on the inside of these industries that's planting the notes because they are aware that people are going to share this on social media and f and this is for the elites to see and it's a secret message to the elites because the elites don't go out and buy Velveeta and things like that but they know that people do so what if that note has like a secret message that only the select few elites can read and it's just right in front of our face and we don't know what it is. If you have any thoughts of what's going on, leave a comment down below. Searching him started having the Hitchhiker effect in their homes and their families. The branch of the CIA called MK Often, and this branch, that was their thing, was that they got into the occult and esoteric, pretty much kind of like the Honor Nerve was the Nazis version. You know, they had several things like the, the Thule Society and Vril, but it was the Honor Nerve who was really steeped in the occult as well as the Brill. But uh, yeah, MK often, I mean, they would infiltrate seances. They would send members into seances. They actually openly talked with witches, active witches. In fact, one of the most well-known witches, uh, this well-known witch was uh, Sybil Leak. This lady, she was so well-known that H.G. Uh, Wells, Lawrence of Arabia, and Aleister Crowley all used to visit her back when she was nine years old. Her family was that connected. In fact, when M.K. Often was dealing with her and approaching her, she would tell them where the most active covens were, um, all the different locations of witches and covens all around the world. I mean, you know that also, what was it, uh, Crowley and several of his colleagues, they all worked with uh, British intelligence. So that's another thing is like a lot of these people that are steeped in the occult and witchcraft and things like that and demonic and satanic rituals also have a lot to do with spies and spy agencies that she witnessed satanic rituals going on out at military bases. And she said that a lot of the people that are mixed up in the naval intelligence, not all of them, but a lot of them, are mixed up with the OTO, the Ordo Tibli Orianus. There was programming. Uh, they used military bases um, because they won't have any interference uh, when they have someone on a military base. And a lot of my programming took place 
on a military basis, uh, I would like to talk about the fact that there are rituals done at the military bases also, and that rituals are not a cover. The people that do the mind control are involved, and very rituals are very much a part of how they do things. I don't know if you've read the uh, book about uh, Laurel Canyon. Have you read any of that stuff and looked into it? Oh, man, yeah, the whole hippie movement. And I touched a little bit on this because people like uh, Timothy Leary, who was big on promoting LSD and things like that, this was all part of the CIA and their MK Ultra as well as MK Often and all that. In fact, this goes all the way back to Edgewood Arsenal. And they needed a giant pull of test subjects so they were using the american public as guinea pigs they've been dealing with satan they've been initiating satanic rituals at all levels of government because they are trying to tap into these things they they want to make contact it's no different than john d back when he was the uh the person that worked for Queen Elizabeth. I've often wondered that if there is secret agencies out there, if they utilize people that have special talents, like being able to remote view and astral project and all of that. I also, I'm not super familiar with Aleister Crawley. I keep hearing about this individual. The only things that I know about Aleister Crawley is that he was a pretty bad individual as far as doing satanic stuff and things like that. But I'm not 100% sure about Aleister Crawley, and that'll probably get me a lot of hate because apparently he's a very popular individual that a lot of people know about. So you can fill me in on the comments on him if you want. I have not personally gone out of my way to search anything about that individual, but I do feel like there is secret agents out there that have those special abilities. There was an event that took place back in the late 40s known as the Babylon Working Ritual. Now this was a ritual that was carried out by Jack Parsons, uh, JPL, you know, people will even to this day say that JPL stands for, for Jack Parsons Laboratories, but on paper it's Jet Propulsion Laboratories. JPL is major, it's a historic, I mean, so much surrounding this, so much history here. Uh, Jack Parsons was not professionally trained, yet he was tapping into high technology and building rockets. How do you do that without any type of formal training? There were no rocket programs in America before Jack Parsons. This is paramount to understand. This guy was tapping into you know, theosophy, Thelema, Thelema, the, the religion of Aleister Crowley. Uh, he was a disciple of Aleister Crowley, and he was working with uh, L. Ron Hubbard, who was the founder of Scientology. Interestingly, not only did L. Ron Hubbard uh, start Scientology, but he was a science fiction writer. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie Battlefield Earth with John Travolta, well, that was written by L. Ron Hubbard. Interestingly, also, John Travolta is a Scientologist, right? Now, I mention this because this is a man who writes science fiction, yet he started a religion based on science fiction. There has to be something in there where he's getting these clues and these, these ideas. He's getting these from another realm. Speaking of supernatural activity that took place after that ritual was performed. Babylon working was successful, according to Jack Parsons. Uh, matter of fact, Parsons said in his Antichrist Manifesto that they were successful and that a child, a child was conceived in that act and that there was a spirit known as Hilarion. The, the government puts together this group that says we're going to get answers to what exactly took place out there in the desert in California by Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard. They go to Jack Parsons. And keep in mind, Jack Parsons is also working with the government. He's now been given, you know, special privileges on things. So they go to him. They say, Jack, oh, all of this stuff that's happening right now, did you do this? <laughs> did you do this? And, you know, he said, I think so. Now, shortly thereafter, Jack Parsons blows himself up in a lab. Accidental. It was not intentional. The belief was that whoever opened up the portal had to close the portal. Well, Jack Parsons is now dead, wow. and the federal government is now having to understand and, and depict exactly to the public what's happening here. And so this group is researching, and out of that group, they finally start to make some headway. They know they're dealing with entities. And so in all of that, they begin to try to make contact with those entities, maybe for some help, 
Maybe because they're trying to figure out how to close this thing. Maybe they're trying to figure out how to undo what Jack Parsons did. So they go through satanic rituals to communicate because that's the only method of communication that they know that works to contact these entities. In doing this, there's a small faction known as the Collins Elite. But once they began to engage in satanic rituals and magic and alchemy, this group says, hey, you know what? This is, this is not what we signed up for. This small group raises up. It's a faction. It's a counterpoint group, which means that they're no longer in agreement with the big group. They have a different opinion. They say, we have a Christian worldview. This goes against our Christian worldview. And so they see that entities are being channeled and communicated with. And now technology is being given through these rituals to these other members of the government. So the Collins elite says, whoa, 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 this is dangerous. You guys are really playing with fire here. We can't support this. We can't do this. And they came up with this idea that the aliens were going to take over. And that in order to protect our country from the aliens, from the entities, they believed that we needed to instate a forced theocracy based on the law of Moses. Okay, this was what's known as a limited access program or an LAP. Uh, a limited access program means that nobody in Congress has to know about this. The Collins Elite were a counterpoint group within different governmental organizations that were, they were party to satanic ritual. It's, it's so crazy to me that so many organizations do these dark practices to what, move forward, gain more wealth? I, I guess I really do not see why they do that. What, what is their full gain? Is it just money? Is that really why they practice these rituals and do these types of things? Because I just don't see that being worth the risk of your life. I, I mean, maybe I'm in the wrong as well because I question religion and I question what's outside of my spirit. I do not practice anything that's supposedly dark magic or anything like that. And I feel like that is risking a portion of yourself that's not worth risking. And something in my gut tells me that. So I feel like that's a good thing to stay away from. But it just always fascinates me that all you hear about these big organizations is they practice satanic rituals. And it's like, why? What does that really get you? And apparently this Aleister Crowley had a big hand in a lot of that kind of stuff. Like a lot of people followed his methods, apparently. That's really crazy to me. Why don't we ever see houses this beautiful built anymore? Where did beautiful homes with the amazing columns, with the brick, with the beautiful, amazing architecture, craftsmanship, like look at the character up at that roof line. What happened? Why were the homes built in the late 1800s and early 1900s so much more beautiful than today's million dollar homes? No one will convince me that modern homes that are millions of dollars like this will ever, ever, ever outlive and be more beautiful than homes built in the late 1800s and early 1900s. To me, this is a snooze fest compared to what used to be built. It's 2024, you have millions of dollars and what type of home are you going to build? This, this modern beauty, all white, looks like one big long rectangle. I don't know, like no one can convince me that this is prettier than the homes built in like 1888, no one. 100 to 200 years ago, they made homes with a pop of collar with wraparound porches. They had different shapes of windows. They had beautiful architecture lines. And I guarantee you inside this home are the wooden pocket doors with just wood everywhere. What happened? What happened? And don't say money because people have a lot of money and do not build homes like this anymore. And it makes me sad because to me, these are the most beautiful type of homes that we've ever seen, ever. So cute and charming. I feel like craftsmanship is out the window and nowadays people are just all about profit and they want to know what they can build quicker but still still expect people to pay a lot of money. Bring back homes like this. Like please, 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 please before they all get torn down or fall apart. I mean, you could technically get homes that look as good as those ones that she was referencing, but it's going to involve a good architect that can draw out your plans and then you're going to have to have the money to have it built that way as well. So it's still possible. It's just people really don't take the time to have that done. They just do a cut and dry version of a home. Now me personally, 
I do mind, I, I do like the modern style looking homes. I really like that square or rectangular shape. I, I think that those are really kind of nice to me for some reason. But it, it would be nice to see more homes being built like the old style of houses. I, I really do enjoy their look as well. Fair warning, and I'm not trying to be dramatic. Please do not watch this at night. And if you are watching it at night, please turn on a light because this terrified me. So I was sent a story along with video proof of something recently and while the story is scary, the sound in the video itself was enough to make me nauseous. So let's get into it. So this follower purchased a duplex where she lives on one side and her sister lives on the other. Well one night they are all sound asleep in bed and she wakes up to her sister banging on her door, ringing her doorbell, doing anything she can to wake her up. So of course she wakes up in a panic, goes to her door, opens it, and her sister is like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I, I was asleep. Are you okay? Like, why are you banging on my door like that? Her sister proceeds to tell her that she heard her scream and thought someone broke in. She also said she tried to call her multiple times and she was not answering the phone. So she came over to check it out. And she was like, I didn't scream. I've, I've been sound asleep, like nothing happened. And she was like, no, I'm telling you, you screamed you screamed your daughter's name and her daughter's name is Bella. So they go back and forth for a bit, eventually remember that there is a ring camera and then go look up the footage and y'all, I'm just gonna play the video. That's clearly, that's Bella. She clearly says Bella and it is the most blood curdling primal scream I've ever heard in my life. Anyways, sweet dreams if it's nighttime, I'm sorry. If it's not, have a great day. That did sound like a pretty concerned scream. I'll increase the audio during post so that you can hear it a little bit better because it was faint. But it makes me wonder if this is real or not because normally it requires something to trigger the door cameras for them to even be activated for them to hear or see anything. So how come it was already activated unless it's live all the time? The Federal Reserve. After researching it yesterday, I was so blown away because it feels like this is a great representation of us living in the matrix. 1913, President Woodrow Wilson was elected. When he was running for president, he was adamant of speaking against the Aldrich plan, which is the Federal Reserve. Yeah. But then had a meeting with the same dudes that came up with the Federal Reserve and compiled this idea where it's like going to pretty much be run by private banks, but let's broaden the term to where it's sounds like it's a sect of the government, hence the term Federal Reserve. Yeah. Federal Reserve is not owned by the U.S. government. It is its own private institution. They created money, but the government owes interest on that money. We're so far in debt to the Federal Reserve. I think the amount that each American would have to pay to get out of debt is like $250,000 per American. So we're, in a sense, enslaved to this private institution. They control everything. I just find it so crazy that we got caught up in basically a mafia scheme and now we are suffering the debt from it. Like, that, that don't make no sense. So if this is really an avatar, then who's holding... Where am I located? Because I'm, I'm asking higher intelligence and they're trying to show me that like my eyes are gathering data. True. My ears are gathering data. My senses are gathering data. That's what they're telling me. And that's why I feel like I'm here. It's It's weird to me and I don't have an answer for it. Why... Why am I, every day I'm, I'm Crystal, why am I not Jim? Or was I Jim? You know, Mary. Why am I this character and why am I, I don't have access to be all the characters if I am all the characters? Like, it doesn't make sense. Also, one day they said, you're not in your body, but you're like, you're like perceiving through it. Kind of like spatial computing goggles. We're looking into this reality gathering the data oh oh shoot you know how like you put on the spatial computing goggles and you're walking around in a living room the spatial mm, the spatial computing goggles are telling you you're in a living room oh, my God. or like you take your avatar and you walk outside okay and so we think we're outside but it's just it's just a virtual world and we think we're there. So just so you, oh my God. Just because you can see 
a living room all around you doesn't mean you're in the living room. So again, I just got the answer. It seems so easy and now I feel so stupid. But I've been asking that question forever. Like, why do I feel like I'm in my body? I got the answer. I got it. Now, higher intelligence showed me that what we really are doesn't have a form. It can be and do all things. So it doesn't have a form. So this allows us to have a form. So it showed me that it's like split itself up or it's, oh, it didn't split itself up. It's perceiving itself through all of us. But then right now, when I was brushing my teeth, it said through everything. Like it could be perceiving itself through the tree. Maybe that's the all seeing eye. That's the quantum seeing all. But that's, that was crazy. Just because we see a room around us doesn't mean we're actually in it. You know, I'm not a huge believer in the we are living in a virtual reality world. I remember listening to the biology teacher and I would ask him if we have cells and microorganisms in our body and they're keeping us alive, they have a function to keep us alive, then that would mean that I am them. They are me and I am them. I know that sounds so crazy, but if they are truly keeping me alive, then they are more me than I am. And I am just a collective thought of all of the organisms in my body and they are what's keeping me going and thinking the way that I do so that they can live longer. And that always upset my teachers because my teachers are like, oh no, that's God. God's speaking to you. God's giving you the way to go. And to me, I always just thought maybe it was just the organisms in my body and I just hear their collective thoughts and I think they're my own thoughts. I know it's really crazy and I'm rambling, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop there. But let me know your thoughts about this because I can't be the only person that thought the organisms in our body was like a, a hive mind and I was just a part of the ride, right? <laughs> Stop thinking too much. Don't go into the past. Don't go into the future. Be in the present because only then it's possible that the mind is free, the capacity is free, and now you can completely immerse into whatever you are doing. And this means you have arrived. You have arrived. Basically, that's what my teachers told me. The system, how do you break out of the matrix? A lot of you guys are starting to wake up to the fact that there's something very wrong about the world, reality, how things are run. Now, first and foremost, you have to understand your consciousness works through your mind, mostly. You need your eyes, your ears, and your senses to perceive. And the people in control understand that to the fullest extent. This is why your mind is extremely programmable. The subliminals they have in music, subliminals they have in television shows. The news you consume, the things that they feed you, it programs your mind and actually, in a way, dictates to you what you should manifest for yourself. Not only that, they also program you through your DNA. Everything you do affects your DNA. And I know science is like, oh, that's not true. It is true. You just don't see the immediate effects of it. But if you eat a really shitty diet, you will affect your DNA, you will affect your health. And they know this, so they also, you know, temper with your food. They make sure that you're not getting enough sufficient nutrients. This is why you have to take supplements. Now that you know this, you have to start to back away from your mind. The key answer to fully breaking out of the matrix is to not be programmable. This is why they call a sheeple or herding the sheep. Sheep are very, very predictable. The farmer and the dog will know exactly what the sheep are gonna do next because the sheep are running through fight or flight. They are running off of just basic stuff. But when you get into the heart, then you become extremely unpredictable and unprogrammable. This is why the ancient Egypts, I feel like there was a dual meaning, but one of the most important meanings is in ancient Egypt, the Pharaoh has to get his heart weighed by a feather when he passes on to the afterlife. Now the afterlife for them was some sort of like paradise, right? Well, this is kind of a metaphor for if you want to get away from the matrix, if you want soul ascension, if you want to be your true sovereign self, you need to use your heart and your heart cannot have any gunk or useless things in it. Notice how every single culture of spirituality talking about ascension, talking about God or a higher power never really mentions the mind. It always talks about the heart. And it's funny because I'm wearing green right now and green is responsible for the heart chakra. When you follow your heart and your heart has to be healed it has to be healthy you cannot have a heavy heart 
you will easily break out of the matrix. You will be extremely unpredictable to these elite because these people in control, they don't really have creativity. They're not really connected to their heart chakra. They are fully in their mind and their root chakra. Root chakra meaning their fear or the obsession over material things. You will become like a mystery to them. They will not be able to read you. And if every single human taps into their heart, this whole system it will fall apart. And that's a good thing. This is why it's called your humanity. Humans are meant to have a heart, but they're forcing us not to have a heart. Please remember to tap back into your heart. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with what this individual is saying, but I do have a couple of things that I would like to add. I do not think that if you have a good connection to your heart chakra and all that, that you're going to throw the elites off. I personally think that the elites have all access to all their chakras and they just use it in a negative way because it benefits them the most. But they are not dumb when it comes to this. They know how to utilize all of the chakras, all of the religious aspects of rituals and things like that. They're very aware. It's just when you have access to all of that, they can't do anything to you because you are now a part of that system that doesn't get affected as like they do. So I definitely believe that if the elites go for the chakra thing, they have all access to the chakra. And that's how they manipulate and are able to do as much as they do. Let me know on your thoughts of this because I might be completely going off the walls with that one. But I really think if there's a way for a common person to know about chakras and how to unlock all of this hidden potential, the elites definitely know about it and they give us access to know about it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. As always, if you are interested in any of the clips, links are in the description down below in the order that we watch them in. And with that being said, have a good day.